Okay, so um, if you haven't subscribed, guys, I know I keep mentioning this. It's very important that you support what I do by subscribing. By subscribing, you'll be getting emails on updates and changes, and especially when the new software comes out, CX, CX, uh, CS6 is a couple months away here. So if you want to know the most up-to-date, marketable, in-demand techniques for web design, web creation, incidentally, I'm a total master at all Adobe products. So if there's an Adobe question, I'm here to help. Dreamweaver, InDesign, After Effects, Premiere. I've been doing this for 25 years. So I'm here to help every step of the way. Okay, so enough of that. So again, subscribe and make comments. So let's take this file and save as, let's call this version 12. Just because it's April Fool's Day. Okay, let's call that version 6. Okay. So let's format out the rest of our type. But before we do that, let's start filling in with some content. Now, what I typically like to do is go and get some dummy, te dummy text. So we're going to go to Firefox, and we're going to bring up a new browser window here. And we're going to go to Google. Or actually, if you're in Firefox, you can do it right from here. But just to keep it less confusing here, we'll just go to Google. My Internet connection is very strange here. It's not, uh, here it goes, okay. We're gonna type in very simple information here. Okay, we're gonna type in IPSUM. Now, when you type in IPSUM, you're gonna get the directions of this website. This is great for making dummy text. I don't want to make this a typing class. I just want to click this website. I go into Google and typing in IPSUM. I click right here. Now, what I want to do here, I want to create five paragraphs of dummy text. Now, from a design standpoint, it makes total sense to use text that you're not going to sit there and read. Now, this is a Latin text, and since I don't speak Portuguese and I don't speak Latin, no, no offense to people who speak Latin and people who speak Portuguese. I'm going to click down here where it says generate five paragraphs of text. Okay, but if you put in text that you can't read, you won't be distracted by the text for your design. So the design should be the design of the site. You shouldn't be distracted with the text. So we're going to take five paragraphs here, and I'm going to show you some very cool tricks here. We're going to take this, and we're going to copy that. I can either copy command C, I can control click Macintosh, I can right click Windows. We're going to copy that, go back to Dreamweaver. We're going to double click main content and I'm going to paste. Copy, paste. Okay, so I copied and pasted this. Now we've gotten way off the page here, so we're going to delete some of this content here that we don't need. So delete this page delete this content. So I just want this to fit right inside the page. Now, we want to format this content slightly differently. I'm going to just delete some more of this here. Now, when I copied and pasted by default, I have, if you look at the code for a second, it copied and pasted these paragraphs. I have paragraph, 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 paragraph. Now, here's a bit of a problem with my paragraphs. I don't have any space between my paragraphs. This is a very, very, this is probably the most important thing about this, vi this particular video title. Okay, I don't have space between my paragraphs. Why don't I have space between my paragraphs? Because we got rid of the space with the asterisk tag, wildcard tag. Remember that in the previous video? If I double click here, we set the padded and the margin space for all HTML tags to zero. Now, that's a good thing because I can count from zero. If you don't set things to zero, then the browser takes over the space, which means the browser is going to say, well, this tag is 5 and this tag is 10. Each browser has its different default settings. That's why you want to create rules, rules for your paragraphs, rules for your paragraphs. Very important step. So I don't have a rule for my paragraph tag. It's now set to zero by default. So how do I fix that? Well, I come down here, make sure I'm someplace inside of a paragraph. I select the tag, I select the tag, and I make a rule. Now, in this particular case, I don't want to talk to the rule, 
specifically for main contents. I'm going to say less specific, less specific. I'm going to hit OK. OK? So this is the rule definition, solo P by itself for the entire site, for the entire site. We're going to go to the category called box, box category. Put this over here so you can see what's happening over here. Okay. So box category, category box. So we're going to do box outside the box. If English is read from top to bottom, we're going to deselect same for all, and we're going to put space here. Now, important step. If I put in, say, 15, 15 pixels by default, I now have 15 pixels of space between my paragraphs. Very cool. Now, the last thing I want to do is hit the return key 20 times to get the space between my paragraphs. That's not what I want to do. I can set the margin space between each paragraph. Now, since I want to teach you the correct way, the same way that I do it, I don't set the space to pixels. I set the space to M spaces, E-M, because as we talked about before, an M space, an E-M, is equal to unit of measurement. It's equal to the height of a capital M. So as an example, if your body copy was set to 10 pixels by default, 1.5 M's would be what? What's 1.5 times 10? 1.5 times 10 is 15. So therefore, it's a relative setting. So get in the habit of setting your P for paragraph setting at the bottom to M spaces. This way, if your text gets bigger, your space gets bigger. If your text gets smaller, your space gets smaller because an M, E, M is equal to the height of letter M. And apply that. Okay? So basically it's 15 pixels if my body copy was 10. Now body should appear before the P for paragraph tag. Okay? Make a change, save a change. Now I'm going to the return key here. And I'm going to the return key here. And I'm going to the return key here. Actually here. Okay, so by the return key, these are separate paragraphs by default. So we started out in the previous video by saying that we could format the paragraph differently by turning them into H2 tags, H1 tags, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to set this tag to H1 tag by simply either coming down here to paragraph formatting, selecting H1, or I can hit Command 1. Command 1 makes that an H1 tag. Now I'm going to come to this paragraph. Put my cursor, I don't have to do this. I'm just going to put my cursor right here. Command 2. Make that header 2. Same thing with this paragraph. Command 2. Header 2. Now could I make it a command 3 header 3? Yes, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to delete some of this content here. Okay, and I'm going to delete some of this paragraph here. In fact, I just want to make this one line. Okay, so this is the header tag for this paragraph, this is the header 2 tag for this paragraph, and this is the header 2 tag for this paragraph. Make a change, save a change. You could have to get into. Okay, now, we talked about this before, but I don't want this to be the style for this H1 tag when H1 is inside of main content. Now, if you recall, we have a rule, an H1 rule, for the entire site, which is the grandfather or the father tag for the H1 tag. So let's make a rule specifically for H1 when H1 is inside of main content. So how can I do that? I select the tag, I select the tag, and I make a rule. So exactly how you select the tags here is exactly how it's going to write the rule, guys. If you look down here at the bottom left, if I select main content. It's going to create a rule for main content, which is different than creating a rule for wrapper. So whatever you select is what you're going to affect. I could not make this simpler for you. In order to affect something, I need to select something. So I'm going to select H1 tag. So therefore, when I come here to make a rule, new CSS rule for my H1 tag, I can do that. So I don't need to be specific for wrapper, but I do need to be specific for H1 inside of main content. So we're going to do this, H1 inside of main content, hit OK. So it says right here, H1 inside of main content. Okay, so here's what I want to do here. I'll move this so I can see this. Okay, I like the font, good. 
So that's the default. The default's an H1 tag. I like the size. Good. But I don't like the uppercase. I'm going to make this capitalized. And I don't like the colors. I'm going to make this my own color. I'm going to come down here and make this this rust color. This rust brown color. So I get to be whatever I want to be because I get to pick my own rules from my parents. So I can take some of my parents' offer and then do my own thing. So you select the tag, you make the rule. So the parent tag is the H1 tag. This is the child tag, H1 tag. So it's going to inherit by default, it's going to inherit the font, the size, and everything that I didn't change from here. That I get to be whatever I want to be by making those changes here. So I hit OK. okay. Make a change, save a change. Now, main content H1 is going to come down here. We're going to drag this down to here. So this should appear after, so it should say site nav, main content. So it should say site nav, main content, h1, news bar. Okay, so let's make a rule for h2 and h2, because again, we have h2 for the entire site. But I just want to put a rule specifically for h2, and h2 is inside of main content. So how do I do that? I select the tag, and I make a rule. I select the tag, and I make a rule. H2, H2 is inside of main content. So in this particular case, so let's say that I do like the size. I'm just going to move this over here for a second. I don't like the color. So we're going to make the color. Let's make the color a dark, dark, dark blue. Maybe some up in this category here. So I get to be whatever I want to be. But if you don't decide by leaving things blank, it's going to default to your parent tag. So that's the beauty behind CSS rules. It's a parent-child relationship. Okay, so it's going to affect all the H2 rules. As an example, this is an H2 tag. This is an H2 tag. So they're the same. They're the same tag that I'm affecting. Okay, make a change, save a change. You'd have to get into. Okay, now let's format the footer tag. I want to share with you a very, very powerful technique. And I'm going to take this one step at a time here. Okay, if I decide more content here, in fact, let's go and save this as, let's save this as version seven. So as an example, if I decide more content, I'm gonna copy, paste this a few times. So command C, command V, control C, control V, Windows. Now, notice that it came out of the box. Now, that's exactly, if you publish this to a server, that's exactly what it's going to look like. Incidentally, something we haven't done yet, we haven't used live view. If you click live view, that will give you a snapshot of what the page looks like on a web server. It's not going to be a perfect rendition. The best way to look at the page is inside of a web browser, like Netscape, Internet Explorer, or Safari, or Firefox. Actually, Netscape, hey, this is 2012. Who uses Netscape? Okay. So I can go to live view by clicking, clicking. So this is exactly what the page will look like in live view, which is not good. Okay. So here I want to make a couple of changes for you. So we started out our site by default to fit inside of a certain size. But the client says, look, I got a whole bunch of content. I don't want to have to go to five different pages. I just want to scroll down to see the rest of my content. Well, there's a problem here because main content by default had a certain height. So here's how we can solve the main content problem. I double click main content, I go to the box section, and I can see that the height of this is 425 pixels. We're gonna delete that. We're not gonna change it to zero, we're gonna change it to nothing. Nothing, by hitting okay. Now, we're running out of time here, because I'm limited to 15 minutes of video. I'm gonna save that, and we're gonna continue this in our next video, so stay tuned.